Good morning from Shizuoka. Yeah. It's day two and I got a pretty nice night of sleep because I was able to turn the temperature up as high as I wanted. And uh, I can't really do that at home because it's really expensive and um, my, my husband and Monachan don't like it that hot. So I am very happy. So let's go out for day two. We started off with such a nice breakfast. There were so many options to choose from, and I got nice and full. Next, we took a seven minute gondola ride up to the top of the range of Mount Katsuragi. And if you don't like heights, you might not want to look down. It's so smooth, but I can't get over that. It's just one rope. True, huh? Look at that. As we sailed up to 1,791 meters in altitude and 452 meters above sea level, we got a bird's eye view of Izu no Kuni city and the surrounding areas of the Izu Peninsula in Shizuoka Prefecture. It looks like a Mekong farm. It's like 1,000 meters below us. <laughs> From this gondola and the observation platform at the top, you can get a vast 360 degree panorama of Suruga Bay, Hakone Mountains, Amagi Mountains, and the world famous Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji was a little shy that day. But this is an incredible place because there's lots to do and you can get amazing views even if the weather is at its worst. Not bad at all. Stage where you can get a 360 view. So this facility, Panorama Park, was built 50 years ago. It's not a city in the gondola. The Nanaku, Okoshi Narimasto, Econo Sumasi, Jisanga, Jitua, Kono Atashino Masho, and the Mir. So taking a very exciting ride by uh, Longway. This is what you would see on a normal day, and I'm sure that as beautiful as the pictures are, they don't do it justice. <laughs> Look at this little mini Mount Fuji. It's snow capped. In addition to some spiritual spots, there are plenty of places to relax and enjoy the views of Mount Fuji, including a foot bath at no extra charge. <laughs> so how is it? <laughs> Perfect. You know what joining is? It's really... I don't really want to unequip all this stuff to... I'm not leaving here. <laughs> <laughs> right? This is what it would be pretty much any other day. After coasting back down to earth, we headed to the Izu Velodrome, which is one of the cycling venues for the Tokyo 2020 Olympic and Paralympic Games. We just had a look on the inside because, you know, the weather, but outside there's a mountain bike course with views of Mount Fuji. This is Japan's first indoor wooden 250 meter cycle racetrack. The surface of the racetrack is made from Siberian pine. And it's not just for the Olympians, they also offer classes and club activities. So it's hard to kind of portray the angle of how steep it is, but just look down. Yikes. It's like a sled. But the best thing was that we got to see the Paralympic athletes warming up and training. We even saw how they race. I 
I had never seen anything like it in person, and it was really cool to see how they navigate that steep, steep, steep ramp. The bikes are also way different than the little mama chari that I'm used to. The tires are so thin, so skinny. They're like records or CDs. This would probably get me to the store and back a lot faster. <laughs> Meeting the Paralympic athletes was amazing. Best of luck in 2020. This is Kawasemi Honkan. They have delicious tofu, easily the best I've ever had. And what makes it so special is that they use the natural spring water from the Kakita River. Check it out, I got my wasabi back that I harvested yesterday. It's got my name on it. And I got these little things. I'm not sure if this is a present yet, but I kind of want it. I'm gonna just take the wasabi and go And that's what makes it that taste. Yeah. So it's a little bit smaller than usual because usually they grow for a year, but this is only 11 months. We learned how to grate wasabi and now I don't think I can eat wasabi any other way. It's so good. I love this wasabi so much. So much that other people at my table thought I was grating too much. But I ate it all. I never thought to eat wasabi with tofu before. It's a perfect combination. And I want to try wasabi with other dishes now. It was even good with just some plain rice. Yummy! Yes. So I got a little kit to take home. And they did let us keep the paddle. Awesome. And some instructions on how to keep it and make it into like, it's good with mayonnaise or like avocados. So I'm thinking I'm going to make some kind of avocado wasabi sauce. Yummy! The Kakita River has Japan's, no, Asia's largest natural spring furnished by Mount Fuji. Incomparable in cleanliness. This area is also a special hidden gem, rich in culture and history. Just like these gardens, just like the building. Front row, I think they are gonna put us to work. It's like a lab coat, like three piece. So there's a coat, mask, and a hairnet. And this thing. And we're gonna figure out how to do this. We couldn't film inside the factory, sorry, but this is what I looked like. Yeah! The Banjo Wasabi factory has lots of products that are available pretty much everywhere, even on Amazon. And the store is really far away from me, so I'm not going to show you the store. But this one is pretty much their pride and joy, their most popular one. This is wasabi salad dressing, but you could use it for pretty much anything. And it's delicious. This is a little bit of what we got a brief look at when we had the tour. It was really interesting to see how wasabi is processed. Yay! One of the things that struck me about the factory tour was how clean everything was. So we had to dress up kind of like the workers and we had to dust ourselves off with these little like pet dander pull-off things, you know those little roll things. And we had like this air blast kind of shower when we were done just to make sure that everything was so clean. Unfortunately for the last leg of our journey, we got Silent Hilled. So we couldn't cross the bridge, let alone see it right in front of our faces. But we still had a great time. This is what the bridge looks like and it offers amazing views of Mount Fuji. And I gotta say, their bathrooms were really nice. The bridge is 400 meters long and 70 meters high. And this never happens. We pretty much chose the one day of the year where it's like this. Yeah, I'm not crossing that right now. These are the views that we would have had had we gone on pretty much any other day of the year. Of course, the colors depend on the season, but it's year-round beauty. So now I want to come back when it warms up. This is a great place to visit even if the weather doesn't cooperate because they have a really nice sky garden. So if it's like a crappy day at the skywalk, there is no problem. We can come up here to this beautiful terrace and get things. So many things. So many things. Yeah! 
And of course, there are lots of Skywalk souvenirs. The Sky Garden is full of shops and restaurants. You can buy tchotchkes. You can buy food. All kinds of fun stuff. These are so cute. They're like some kind of chocolate cookie. The snow came sifting down, the whole hills and fields were blanketed in snow. A fairy snowman is playing, a place dear to snowman's heart. Izu and Hakone have their own beers, and some of them we tried last night. Yummy! And they of course have their take on other alcoholic drinks. Including, and I kind of want to try this, but I don't want to lug it home. This is um, Izu's Mekon wine, and I love Mekon orange juice. And there's a little It says that it's sweet. I like sweet. At the very end, it cleared up just a bit, so we saw the bridge along with a beautiful sunset. And we got such a nice send off. So if you get a chance and you want to see some of the best hospitality that Japan has to offer, check out the Izu area of Shizuoka Prefecture. But now it's time to head back to Tokyo Station on the bullet train in less than an hour. Thank you for your hospitality, Izu, and thank you for watching. Bye!